Hey everybody, just wanted to let you know about the pieces you're hearing to, on today's episode and give you a couple of reminders. Uh, the first piece that you're hearing is dedicated to my friend Lucy in New Mexico. It's going to be used for a Scottish dance that she's writing on the, okay, um, they had a dance once where it was raining and leaking and they had to put buckets on the dance floor. And so of course the added obstacle was um, humorous and she decided there needed to be a dance called Don't Kick the Bucket uh, that she would write and so I wrote this tune to go with that dance. Um, I wanted to just take this moment to recognize Lucy and other folks like Lucy who are incredible supporters of music and the arts. Um, you'll notice that we're filming using some different equipment for this episode because of a dear friend who donated um, to help with the production of these and my other musical projects. And so thank you to all of those supporters of the arts. Uh, if you are able, this is just a reminder that there are lots of artists right now who are unemployed because of the pandemic. And one of, there are a couple of ways that you can support artists um, right now. Becoming a patron on Patreon, um, buying their merch, CDs are still being made. And even though a lot of people stream, that money actually doesn't get back to artists very much at all. And so if you are able, go purchase their albums. Um, spread the word. If you're not able to support financially, just sharing um, the art on social media and by word of mouth is incredibly impactful. So this is just your friendly reminder that um, to keep your artist friends in mind. So when we say support local and buy local on the end of um, these episodes, it doesn't just mean dairy products, it means the arts too. So um, thank you to those who always support the arts. Uh, you mean the world to us. And uh, lastly, the last thing you'll hear on today's episode is a tune I wrote just last week. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible, terrible at naming tunes. And so uh, I've decided I'm just gonna start naming them after cows because why not? So um, the last waltz you'll hear today on this episode is called Rizzo's Waltz. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back to Born in a Barn. Today's episode, we are talking about digestion. Uh, from the beginning to the very end. Okay, so this cow is chewing her cud. And this is an important part of the cow's digestion. Because old cows, when they are milking and heifers, when they're eating alfalfa and grasses and other forages, they don't chew their feed much when they eat it. They just suck it up and eat as much as they can when they have it in front of them and then later they go back and they regurgitate it and they start chewing their cud like you can see this cow is doing and then they swallow it again and they have four well four compartments of their stomach so after they chew it it goes to the next one and then they just keep passing through and they ruminate. <laughs> so dad was telling a story this morning, actually, that once, and he said this happened years ago, but once they had a cow that was sick and they called the vet in and the vet said, oh, she's lost her cud. And they pulled a cud out from a different cow and stuck it in that cow's m mouth. And she just started chewing her cud and then was fine. Yeah, it's probably something to do with the bacteria in their stomach because they have enzymes that help digest the um, forage and feed. And when they, lose the, when they lose that enzyme, it's hard for them to get it back because it's kind of a particular bacteria. And we feed probiotics, which 
provides an additional source of that more than what their body can produce. And calves, calves don't chew cud until they are on grain feed and hay. When they are um, drinking milk, the milk passes right through their... It, they bypass their rumen so they don't ruminate until they start eating grain and hay. So it just goes straight to their abdomen instead of into their rumen. Yeah. Now, in our um, previous episodes, we've talked about the food that they're eating and, how, you know, water they're drinking and stuff like that. Um, so we just wanted to make sure we covered what happens once they actually eat it. And so that inclu- we talked about the feed and how much of it tri- um, converts to milk mm-hmm. um, and how you build the ratio according to how much milk you want them to produce, etc., But, um, obviously, as with all critters that eat, um, they also poop. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes they poop an awful lot. I mean, often they poop an awful lot. Yep. So. So when cows poop, that's your report card on how your feed (laughs) feed has been and what the cows are doing with it. Um. The manure can tell you an awful lot about what you're putting into the cow and how they are digesting it. Um, When they have a bellyache, it gets messier? Yep, it gets very loose, and that is... Not pleasant. No. But, you know, it tells you what you need to know. Mm Mm-hmm. This cow is hardy. Is she? She's four years old now. Another H. Yep. Okay. This one here is Homer. <laughs> we had a couple of Homers. Yep, and she's just a two two year old. And then this white one, this is Rose. Rose. Yep. How old is she? She's a three-year-old. And they just got fed. Yep. For their eating and milking. So they're busy eating. 